Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 25th, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This morning, for about two hours, a major BGP route leak did affect a number of large internet sites, including Cloudflare. And Cloudflare was the one that was most often quoted in this particular case. Cloudflare published a nice blog post about what exactly happened here. And apparently the root cause was a small internet service provider in Pennsylvania, DQE Communications, using a BGP optimizer. What these optimizers typically do is they will try to find the best routes for internet traffic if there are multiple options. So what they did in Cloudflare's case was that they took a larger net block that Cloudflare advertised that's usually a slash 20 split up into two slash 21s and advertised these slash 21s and what was supposed to be internal to their network. But apparently their upstream Verizon AS701 picked up these more specific routes. And since more specific routes have precedence over the more general or larger prefix, these routes were now propagated to other peers connected to Verizon. And AS701, this Verizon network, is one of these core networks in the internet. So a lot of different services that appeared with Verizon were now trying to route uh, their traffic instead of directly to Cloudflare to this small network in Pennsylvania, which of course, as a result was overloaded and that then led to a denial of service against Cloudflare and other affected networks. This is yet another case where we sort of see one of the basic problems with BGP. BGP is the protocol that allows ISP to essentially advertise which IP addresses belong to them. And well, uh, there's little to no verification if uh, these advertisements are correct. Now you may say, hey, I can look up on who is who actually owns particular IP address range. Well, who is is not always correct. In particular, routing sometimes has to be adjusted very quickly in order to, for example, bypass some outages. So as a result, these BGP advertisements are picked up by ISPs very quickly and can lead to a more or less instant denial of service if they happen to be wrong. Now, there have been a couple of approaches around for a while now that should have prevented this particular issue, most notably the Internet Routing Registry. Cloudflare in its blog post is somewhat legitimately complaining that Verizon apparently has not yet implemented this particular feature, which according to the Cloudflare blog has been around for about 24 years. Cloudflare also implemented a routing PKI or RPKI. Uh, this particular framework allows a network operator to basically tell others via digital signatures what's the minimum network size it's advertising. And well, Cloudflare advertises networks down to a size of a slash 20. So again, this is something that should have been enabled, but this feature is actually a little bit new. So really the lesson learned here, if you are running BGP, then please become familiar with features like RPKI or the internet routing registra and try to implement them and don't just blindly trust uh, these advertisements that you are receiving from other networks. And for the end user, the solution here is really well a trust TLS. Uh, TLS uh, will at least prevent any man in the middle attacks uh, that may result from rerouted traffic. So don't accept these bad certificates. In particular, if you have automated connections, scripts and such that are connecting to TLS protected endpoints, make sure they are validating these certificates correctly. 
And just to point out some of the dangers of cloud-based file sharing services, we transfer a service that allows you to send files to other users. Uh, typically the way this happens is that you upload the file to WeTransfer and WeTransfer will then send an email with a download link to your intended recipient. Problem here was that the emails went to the wrong email address, so the wrong user received the link and was able to download the file. The problem here is of course that there is no real end-to-end -end encryption in the sense that the file that you are uploading is in the clear within vTransfer and whenever they sent the link to whoever, that person will have access to the file. In general, of course, email isn't necessarily a trusted uh, service anyway, so you probably shouldn't send anything confidential like a download link to a confidential file via email. I would recommend if you're using a service like this, you may want to just encrypt the file using a key that you shared with the recipient or even better, something like PGP, where you have public and private keys. One issue that keeps coming up is exposed Jenkins servers. So these servers are supposed to be properly protected and better locked away from the public. Jenkins is often used to sort of automate the production of software as part of the DevOps tool chain. Well, if someone has access to the Jenkins server, they often are able to not only read, but in some cases even update software that Jenkins deals with. To demonstrate this problem, there's now a new tool called Jenkins Pillage. Pretty simple tool that basically automates sort of this post-exploitation phase once a exposed Jenkins server has been found. And well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.